Very right. Retail investors, meanwhile, have doubled their trading activity during the pandemic. Online brokers cite people spending more time at home, market volatility, and zero dollar commissions. According to TD Ameritrade, some of the most popular stocks among retail investors last week were Tesla, Apple, Beyond Meat, Disney, and Microsoft. They're also sticking with American Airlines and Delta. And joining us for more on that is J.J. Kinahan, uh, Chief Market Strategist at TD Ameritrade, and Mike Santoli, CNBC Senior Morning, Markets Commentator. J.J., you even said some people are, are buying uh, CCL and cruise lines as well. And th that would seem to me that, that they're buying totally buying value, where I saw something from Paulson saying that, Jim Paulson saying that the growth stocks have actually outperformed. What's outperforming right now, and where's the interest? Well, I, I, you know, as, as you said, it was kind of interesting on the cruise lines to me, Joe. And, and, and what I'm seeing right now is a bifurcated buying by our clients. As you said, there are some that are more traditional, like Dow stocks, where you see the Apples, um, you know, even Exxon Mobil's, Microsoft being bought. But the cruise lines and airline stocks were interesting to me. And actually, the cruise line started with our millennial clients buying those first, then the regular population. And airlines, you know, our clients are definitely a believer in that story longer term. We've seen American, we've seen Delta three months in a row now, where our clients, I think, longer term are just like, they believe that people are going to get back to travel. Now, this is a trade that if you're making it, you better have a longer term horizon because... I just don't see us ramping right up right away in terms of airlines. You know, we've all seen some pictures, et cetera, of super crowded flights, but it's because there's so few flights. So that one uh, I find interesting. And, you know, the one thing we always talk about with our clients in education is in terms of what is your time frame? That one needs a really long time frame. Uh, you know, some of the others might be a little bit more like beyond meat uh, around earnings, et cetera. Tesla. Uh, fell out of favor for a little while. Our clients have been right back at it over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's because of what you guys talked about earlier, the back to work, or just the expectation that they longer term can meet a lot of what they said they would do. Santoli, uh, you know, you were watching yesterday, uh, I'm sure, between three and four. So, Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot, got a lot got thrown at the stock market yesterday, starting with Druckenmiller from the day before at the uh, Economics Club, throw in Tepper uh, in the middle of the day, and then, you know, cherry on top with, with Powell's comments. Uh, and when we were down 700, you remember there were a few days when we were down triple did that, or however many. We were down well more than 500, but we were down four times that a couple of times. Did you think that sure. that was a possibility yesterday as, as far as a quick retest of, of some of the lows? No, nothing like some of the lows. I mean, I think it's interesting that we could even be talking about, oh, you know, does this mean we're down a percent and a half or two percent in a day? Are we going to go back to the lows? Well, the lows are 20, 25 no, no, percent down I, from but, here. But, uh, on a typical uh, 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 market uh, environment, we don't way. talk about that. On the way, on the way, not, we're not going to get there in one I, day, but we could get back to that volume I don't trading think, where we're headed lower. I'll take it in steps, which is this is like the fourth five, three to five percent pullback we've had since the beginning of April. Yeah. The other two were picked up pretty, pretty easily. Um, it definitely seems like there's a shift in orientation and tone and mood away from the opportunities of a relatively clean reopening to the hazards and maybe the complications of it due to all those things you were talking about. And what's interesting about yesterday is we've had weakness in the banks before, like yesterday, in energy before, like yesterday. But in many days, the Nasdaq 100 stocks were up a lot for no particular economic reason, and they were holding the indexes together. Yesterday, they pulled back, and they, did, they sort of exposed the weakness underneath it. So, you know, look, we closed on the S&P right up. We closed above 2,800, closed above the levels from before David Tepper started speaking on Halftime Report. And by the way, his comments were not you know, trying to knock the market down. He was just kind of saying, like, it doesn't look like you have an edge right here after this rally. Things look a little expensive. All the big obvious stocks are carrying the indexes, and it's hard to, to necessarily feel like you, you have a read on something that's going to, you know, change the script from here. I don't know. Worst overvaluation since 1999 didn't sound, uh, didn't sound, sound yeah. too good. Uh, but look, if you're looking at today's earnings power, it right. certainly is. But uh, right. if you're looking at the NASDAQ 100, it's a 25 times earnings. It's not like It's 99. really infinity times earnings. A lot of, uh, if you got zero earnings, the price yeah. of, you know, it's like, uh, it's like the Fed. It's almost infinity. Anyway, JJ, uh, do you have a feel for 
uh, whether we're we're just in a in a kind of a range here, or do you think we go we break out one way or another near term? Well, I think Mike was really uh, he paid on that twenty eight hundred holding that I thought was really really important overall, Joe. I mean, we, what we what you did see really quickly, you know, you and I talk about the VIX quite a bit. VIX pops back up, and then again this morning a bit higher, up near thirty six now. So it should tell you that we we have a little bit of a rougher road. I think some people have this expectation that we were going to go straight up and that the worst was over. And yeah. we still have a lot of tests coming up. And I think the biggest test coming up is something you guys talk about a lot. And that is, as certain states get back to work as compared to others, how quickly can we ramp up? And more importantly, there's been so much optimism around things getting back together so quickly. I think we're coming to perhaps reality meeting optimism pretty soon.